there's something going on. But you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? Welcome to the Bardo Times, a narrative poem in 12 parts. Part 3, Hyperreality. The attraction of the void is irresistible. The real and the unreal morphing into a world of image, show and the hypernormal. A spectacle of make-believe, shimmering facade for the 21st century, like drifting in an open space that needs to be filled. We are living within bubbles, customised by our digital conveniences. Us, them, friend, enemy, good, bad, and the rest. These are now our false realities. It is no longer the jagged pill we are forced to swallow, but the smooth pill we are willing to pop. Marcuse said it well, we're living within a comfortable, smooth, reasonable, democratic unfreedom. The hyperreal evades any real contact. The hyperreal has succeeded in obscuring any sight of resistance. It's all so real, and yet, of course, it is not. And so we are provided with entertainment instead. The attraction of the void is irresistible. Entertainment, consumerism, a multitude of intoxications. This is a spectre of hyperreality. We no longer distinguish reality from a simulation of reality. We are no longer faced with the threat of struggling with our shadows. We are now faced with the threat of our clones. Illusion is now our greatest industry. It's the story that's always been told because that's the way it's always been. We've been suckled on it since babies. Those of us caught up in the hyper-reality have no idea what the game rules are. These rules are their rules, not ours. These rules tell us that spectacles are to be believed. We have enemies to fear and that order and control really equals convenience. Yet there is an underlying feeling that something is not quite right. There is a distortion of perception, a perception distortion. Hyperreality is the normalization of delusion. The attraction of the void is irresistible. Digital and virtual worlds constitute a substitution, a flight from reality. Any basis of truth has slipped into appearances that are the sleek face of simulation. Left politics and right politics, these distinctions are now nullified. 
the new reality principle tells us that nothing is out of reach and almost everything can be bought for a price. The simulation is arranging itself to become the new face of the sustainable. The de-real is the motive of our times. How far can the world derealize itself before it arrives at the realization of what is happening? The hyperreal is contagious, like a chain reaction. How far can it go before succumbing to a permanent state of hyperreality? The secret networks at the periphery are where the real action is, and the hyperreal is left to occupy the spectacle. Hyperreality is also about disappearance. The attraction of the void is irresistible. At the extremity of hyperreality, everything disappears. At the extremity of warfare, there is no real humanity, only sorrow, loss and pain. At the extremity of sexuality, there is no warmth, only the pornography of lust and the commodity of desire. At the extremity of goodness, there is the greed to do good. At the extremity of love, there is no real love but obsession and possession. In the slipstream of the hyperreal, the substitute is always on 24 7. The hyperreal messes with our senses. Our aching bodies, our restless sleep, our tired eyes from all the screens in our lives. It's not motion sickness we're suffering from, but monitor sickness. The hyperreal lifestyle creates a background noise, an endless low static buzz that infests our everyday spaces. Things seemingly take place, but we are not quite sure. The less real, but with hyper appeal. The attraction of the void is irresistible. We are waking up to a world in a new rhythm, a faster speed and an altered resonance. We cannot navigate our own path through life by GPS. Disneyfication gives us the bigger, the faster, the better, yet all the more imaginary. It's as if we're afraid to be bored. The spectacle becomes the lived space of our social lives. The here be dragons of old are replaced by Disney. The hyperreal evades a sense of origin. This gives us this gives us the rise in nostalgia, retro revival and superheroes. Star Trek conventions speaking Klingon, looking like Spock. In the realm of the hyperreal, the origin is originless, and real place is placeless. We're being pulled into the flux and flow of this hyperreality. As Vaclav Havel warned us, transcendence is the only real alternative to extinction. And yet, the attraction of the void is irresistible.